Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship at Lakewood United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Mike Childs. We have Helen Emmett playing our, our track or organ. We have Terry Frank uh, as our worship leader today. And we welcome you in the name of Christ our Lord. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, the air is clearing from all those fires up in the north in Quebec, Canada. And uh, we just pray that uh, you're healthy and well and having a good day. So enjoy our worship service and thanks for joining us.
United Methodist Church. Who's ready for a picnic? Woo! Yeah. All right. We are having that today, 1230 at the pavilion at the Lakewood Rodden Gun Club. Be there or be square. <laughs> Welcome to you on this second Sunday after Pentecost at Lakewood United Methodist Church. I'm your worship leader, Terry Frank. Mike Childs, Pastor Mike Childs is here with the word and the message. Martin Solbosky is not with us today. He is in Minnesota visiting his mother. Uh, he's taking care of some business out there. So Helen will be with us playing the tracker organ for the next couple of weeks. So we thank her very much for being able to do that. I do have some announcements. If you are a visitor, we'll be passing the few pads around so that we have a record of your signing in and being here with us on this Sunday. Also, I want to mention that uh, if you're in need of the facilities, they're down at the end of the hallway in the education wing of the church, and there's one in the conference room, and there are men's and women's rooms down on the left side as you head toward the door in the education wing. On the schedule for the week, we uh, do want to mention that coming up in a couple of weeks, we'll be in the June 25th bulletin recognizing all the graduates for 2023. If you have not submitted a name of someone, a loved one, or someone close to you, please do so to the office. Father's Day is next Sunday, so make sure to bring a flower for the bouquet for the alder for that. Uh, we did sing the birthdays last week, but since it is today, I'll wish Kyle Keller a happy birthday today. He's in the back. We thank Kyle for his diligence in lighting the uh, altar candles for us weekly. There is no Sunday school today because of the church picnic. I want to mention on the uh, calendar for the week, Bible study is tomorrow, Monday the 12th, and that's at 5 o'clock, I believe. Sandy, uh, she's given me the thumbs up, so I'm good on that. On Wednesday, the prayer gathering will be here at 10.30 a.m., and you're welcome to join in in spirit, even if you're not here. On Thursday, the 15th, Bible study is here at 10.30 a.m. There are a couple of other items that I did want uh, to mention, and that is, again, thank you to all the volunteers, everybody who helped out with the very successful Super sale, the final total, and uh, Pauline put it in the bulletin. It's $1,815.35. So we did very well on the super sale. 10% uh, is going to be transferred to missions. The blessing box is getting 20% of that, and 70% is going to be church general funds. So we did very well on that, and thank you, Pauline, for spearheading that this year and all these years that we have done it in the past. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes, and uh, Karen. We do have a trustees meeting Wednesday, 6 o'clock. Bring your notes for the lease. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Any other uh, announcements that need to be made? Pauline. Well, this is kind of incorporated into prayer time, but I did talk to Robin, Rita Weiler's daughter, and she still continues to call, and we pray on Wednesday, so I wanted to let you know there's some faithful to do that. And Rita has bad days and good days, but she is on a decline, so we could all continue to keep uh, Robin, her caregiver, and also Rita in your prayers. Anything else? Well, seeing none, I will ask you to join me in our bulletin for our call to worship as printed on the inside cover. Rejoice in the Lord, all you righteous. Praise be this the upright. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. And would you please join me for our opening hymn, it's number 121 in your red hymnal, there is a wideness in God's mercy. Number 121, 
Stand as you are today. Thank you so much, uh, Carrie, and thank you, Helen, for filling in. I appreciate that very much. Um, a blessing to have talented people uh, willing to use their gifts in the worship of our Lord on a Sunday morning. I welcome all of you, and uh, the timing of our picnic is good. We've had a couple days of bad weather, uh, bad, you know, the the, the warning about the air quality has uh, prevented some people from going outdoors, and today I think is a much better day, a lot clearer air, and uh, hopefully the wildfires in Canada will be subsiding, and uh, I've been praying for God to send rain, to douse the fires, and, and uh, rain here, we had a little bit, not much, but a little bit of rain would clear the atmosphere here as well. Uh, we did get word from the family of Nancy Anderson, and she went home to be with the Lord this week. And uh, some of you may remember Nancy. She uh, has not been here for a couple of years, and of course the pandemic, the lockdown, uh, prevented her from even having visitors when, uh, when that happened. So uh, keep Tom and the, the other boys in your prayers uh, as they grieve her loss. Laura Holleran had her surgery and it went well. And you can ask Barb if you want more details, but uh, praise God for that. Continue to keep Ron Littlejohn and Georgia Wellman in your prayers. Uh, Larry and Nancy Meyer could certainly use our prayers as well. And Rita Weiler. And those listed, if you look in the uh, back of your bulletin, you'll see a pretty extensive list of, of prayer concerns. And also the district superintendents. Um, there's going to be some movement among the DSs. And our own Suzanne Block is going to a new uh, territory. And, and we are going to be sharing uh, the, uh, the DS from up north in Niagara Falls area. So it's going to be a little bit of a transition. Pray for them as we transition 
through this time. So let's, uh, let's lift our hearts and our thoughts and join our thoughts together as we pray. Join me in prayer, if you would. Oh God, your mercies are new every morning, and we are thankful for that, that we can put the past behind us and enjoy the day that we have been given as a gift from your hand. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you touch our hearts and lives, for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, for the many answered prayers that we can celebrate. We thank you, God. We are so thankful that you are a God who hears and listens, a God who responds, and a God who indwells us through your Holy Spirit. Uh, we can be connected with you 24-7, 365. No doubt about it. And we pray and ask for your continued grace and mercy in our lives. Continue to work your amazing transformation, uh, making us more holy, helping us to be kinder persons, persons that are filled with compassion. Lord, when we stumble, when we have those times when we are not a good example of Christ in the world, forgive us. Please forgive us, God, and help us to do better. There are times, Lord, when we are overcome by the troubles that we face every day. So, God, stand beside us and walk with us through those troubles. Give us grace and mercy in abundance. Oh, God, we love you. We thank you for sending Christ to this earth and sending Christ uh, to be willing to die on the cross for our sake. God, we are so blessed that we have a living Savior, a living Lord, a living Messiah. And God, we, we do lift up and remember these people that we have mentioned already. Prayers for Rita and Robin, for Larry and Nancy, for Georgia, for Ron, for Laura Holler and ongoing, ongoing healing and strength. And Lord, there are others that are on our hearts that we want to lift up right now. Everybody. Mm. Bill Leonard. Yes. in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Well, you'll notice I'm already in my picnic attire and looking forward to uh, some fellowship at the Rod and Gun Pavilion. Uh, I do hope you're all willing and able to join uh, when we be, get together at 1230 and then lunch is at 1 o'clock. So give you a chance to go home and change if you wish or just come as you are. Our middle hymn today is uh, from the Brown Hymnal, number 54, The Solid Rock. Thank you. 
Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, and it's chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, uh, reading 9, 9 13 through 26. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. And then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died, he said, but you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Jesus turned around, went, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that moment. When Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. The girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, however, Jesus went in and took the girl by the hand and, shook, and she stood up. The report of this miracle swept through the entire countryside. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. Thanks be to God. Weight loss goal, to be able to clip my toenails and breathe at the same time. <laughs> After watching how some people wear their masks, I understand why contraception fails. <laughs> some of my friends exercise every day. Meanwhile, I am watching a show I don't like because the remote fell on the floor. <laughs> For those of you that don't want Alexa or Siri listening in on your conversation, they are making a male version. It doesn't listen to anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. Would you pray with me this morning? Oh Lord our God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh God, you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The title of today's message is Mercy, Not Sacrifice, based on Matthew chapter 9. How discriminating are your tastes? Do you have Fifth Avenue type expectations or are you Lower, lower East Side? Do you have bohemian friends who seem like a 60s throwback? Or are you more likely to have friends that dress to the nines and have expensive clothes, wear pricey perfume? Maybe more to the point, do you care how others view your friends? Are you in one particular social stratum or another? And how does that affect and reflect on your walk of faith? In Matthew's Gospel, these issues came up to the forefront when Jesus was slumming with sinners. <laughs> and the local leadership, those Pharisees and Sadducees, they saw his fan base was growing and they disapproved his friends and disciples. In life, we cannot choose our family, but we can choose our friends. 
Who we hang with can be viewed askance at times. Are you embarrassed by your family or your friends? <coughs> what does that say about you? In Matthew 9, we see Jesus early in his ministry. He has just called a tax man to be part of his crew of disciples. Matthew, sometimes called Levi, was at work when Jesus calls him away. And then Jesus went to his home for dinner and to meet his friends. Scandal! What's he doing? We don't know if Jesus had met him before. Maybe he had. We don't know if there was a building of relationship that had started earlier on. All we know is that Jesus called and Matthew answered that call. He left his business. He just walked away from his business and introduced Jesus to his friends by hosting a dinner party. This is where we see Jesus often meeting people where they are in the course of their life and then inviting them to a deeper faith. Now, why did the Pharisees and Sadducees take offense at Jesus' actions? Well, these people were considered unclean. They were part of a business that was tainted, according to Old Testament law, because they were handling a lot of money and dealing with the secular government. In that story of Zacchaeus, we learned that it was not uncommon for tax collectors to become very wealthy because they could tack on additional surcharges above the taxes that Rome required. Some would call them crooked. I wonder if Zacchaeus was at that dinner party for Jesus. Was he a friend of Matthew's? At any rate, we don't know, but we, we read an interpretation of the attitude of the Pharisees who question the disciples. Verse 11, why does your teacher eat with such scum? Why is he with the riffraff? You know, why does he hang out with these types? Pay attention to this, because in the later section we read, this same attitude applies. Jesus, as he does, knows what they're thinking, and he's asking, and he says, healthy people don't need a doctor. It's the sick people who do. And then he adds this quote from the Old Testament prophet Hosea 6, verse 6. I want you to show mercy not offer sacrifices. That quote from Hosea, from, from God, really says this, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces. Now he will heal us. He has injured us. Now he will bandage our wounds. O Israel and Judah, what should I do with you? Asks the Lord. For your love vanishes like the morning mist and disappears like the dew in the sunlight. I sent my prophets to cut you to pieces, to slaughter you with my words, with judgments as inescapable as light. I want you to show love, not offer sacrifice. I want you to know me more than I want burnt offerings. But like Adam, you broke my covenant and you betrayed my trust. Wow. That is quite an indictment from God towards the people he loves and the people he calls his own. Jesus is speaking from the heart when he says, I'm here for a purpose, and that is to bring healing and forgiveness to those who need it. He is here to bring life and light into our dark world. The second part of this reading today takes these words and puts action to it, doesn't it? We could compare this section with Mark 5, 21 through 43. In Mark, we see many more details about the man and his daughter, and also the woman with the flow of blood. Matthew gives us sort of a condensed version that is also tailored to the audience that Matthew was reaching. Remember, Mark was likely the first written gospel, and Matthew was writing to a Jewish Christian group who were undergoing a lot of persecution. So in Mark, the little girl is dying, and the leader's name is given as Jairus. Matthew has the girl already dead, and he conceals the leader's name, calls him an official. But look at the incidents from this perspective. Death and a dead body were considered unclean. 
A woman who had been bleeding or menstruating continually for 12 years, also considered unclean. The leading priest would not go near them. The leading priest would not want to touch them. They did not wish to be unclean. And any association, any contact with such people would make them unclean. Jesus said earlier in Matthew 5, 17 and following, don't mis misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Jesus goes to the official's home where the funeral practices are underway. He stops them. He says, she's only sleeping. Same thing he told the disciples about his friend Lazarus when word arrived to him. You remember that story? So now the mourners and the musicians, they're, they're laughing at him. Doesn't he know death? Doesn't, doesn't he think we know that she's dead? But Jesus, the risen Christ, knows more about life and death than we do, doesn't he? He chases them all out, and in Mark's gospel, he invites only the parents and three chosen disciples into the room, where then he takes the little girl by the hand, and he says to her, Talitha Kuhn, little gazelle, get up. And she rose and walked around. And all of them were amazed. And then he gave orders, don't tell anyone about this, but give her something to eat. And I would say, hey, she's a teenager. Of course she's hungry. She's always going to be hungry. <laughs> in Mark's gospel, the woman pressed close to Jesus in the crowd and just reaches out to touch the hem of his robe. The hem of his garment. But we learn details not present in Matthew's story. She has been sick for a very long time. And also socially unclean. Basically she is an outcast. A perceived sinner. And not only that, she has gone broke going to different doctors trying to find a cure for her bleeding. Does that resonate with anyone? You know, our health care system is far from perfect. Many people become impoverished by having an illness that is expensive to treat. I happen to know a couple of friends who, without insurance, would be paying thousands of dollars a month for a treatment to help them just to live a normal life. I read some articles detailing about persons uh, who went broke from personal health care crisis. They simply, they simply ran out of their own money, they ended up borrowing money, and it became a serious problem. Let me share with you some of these stories. Elizabeth, I think I went too far. There we go. Elizabeth Woodruff drained her retirement account and took on three jobs after she and her husband were sued for nearly $10,000 by the New York hospital where his infected leg was amputated. Ariane Buck, a young father in Arizona who sells health insurance, couldn't make an appointment with his doctor for a dangerous intestinal infection because the office said he had outstanding bills. Allison Ward and her husband loaded up credit cards and borrowed from relatives and delayed repaying student loans after they had twin boys that were born prematurely, and it left them with $80,000 in debt. Uh, Ward is a nurse practitioner and took on extra nursing shifts working days and nights in order to try to pay her bills. And she said, I wanted to be a mom, but we had to have more money. And what the article said in, in basic uh, format, the three are among more than a America, including 41% of adults uh, beset by a health care system that is systematically pushing patients into debt on a large scale. It goes on to talk about uh, 
Uh, it's actually trying to find strategies and ways to get around this problem or to solve the problem. So Jesus said, and, and it's still true today, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy rather than sacrifice. Mercy. We might say love. That God desires a deep relationship with us. And we are so broken and touched by death. We need the love of Christ to redeem us and to heal us. To bring us back to life. And to renew a right spirit within us. To bring us back into relationship with God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me this morning? Dear God, we need you desperately. We want and desire this deep, loving relationship with you. We need to discover your mercy and live into it. In God we pray, Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sometimes we take things for granted, like being able to breathe, being able to breathe good air. This past week has reminded us um, sort of how fragile, you know, fragile things are. And, and I don't know about you, but uh, those days that it was real hazy and you looked to the north and you basically saw clouds of smoke billowing. Um, one person that I worked with, they said, oh, this is a sign from God. And I said, well, if it's a sign from God, it's telling us, don't start forest fires. <laughs> and at least one person uh, texted, sent me a text, and they said they remember the same event happening back in 1950. Now, that predates me, but some of you might remember back in 1950, big wildfires in Canada, and the smoke came pushing down, and actually, you know, occluded the sun and, and made it a very dramatic uh, dramatic couple of days. So um, I was affected. I, I was surprised. You know, I was experiencing symptoms of allergies, you know, watery eyes, uh, congestion, and, and choking, kind of feeling choked. And more than one person said they felt that. And uh, kind of an interesting couple of days to, to, to think about how our world is uh, can be fragile. Our world can be kind of fragile. And uh, so we should be thankful that God is a loving God, a God of mercy, a God of grace. And uh, we don't take up our offering as we used to do. We have plates at the back. And uh, just to remind you, please, to, to uh, give your morning offerings as you come or as you go. And thank you for your faithfulness. Um, a way of saying thank you to God for his faithfulness toward us. So let's pray over our morning offerings, then we're going to sing our doxology, and then we will close with a number from our brown hymn, though, number 411, Jesus Took My Burden. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you give to us. And we thank you, Lord, that you watch over us and that you care about each one. You know us and our, our names, our persons. You know how many hairs we have on our head. And you even are mindful of the smallest sparrow that falls to earth. We thank you, God, for being a caring and loving God. We return a portion of our blessings to you, God as a way of saying thank you for your faithfulness to us. We ask and pray a blessing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
God, God have mercy on us as we go. In, in God, God, Father, Jesus, Jesus and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. God bless your day. I hope it is filled with praise and glory from God. Have a good week.